Hello gamers! Are you excited by playing a narrative game with strong storylines and character progression? But you just not get on with the idea of deck construction, having to choose from literally hundreds of cards. Well, sucks to be you as the rest of us are having a great time! Shove off losers! But wait, what's this? Or more accurately, what are those? Each one of these is a pre-built single class starter deck that is ready to use right out of the box. It consists of a 34 card level 0 deck plus 26 additional cards you can use to upgrade the deck as your investigator progresses through a campaign. And you get the investigator mini card as well. Each of them comes in the same size blister pack as one of the mythos packs but they have the name of their investigator and their portrait on the front as well as the colour of the class they belong to. And just to emphasise, each of these investigators only has access to a single class of cards, plus neutrals to really keep the deck building and customization aspects as simple and streamlined as possible. In fact, you don't even get any neutral cards in the pack other than the weaknesses. Even their signature assets for the first time ever are class cards, although there are still no level cards tied to their originating investigator's deck. And there is a mix of assets and skills. Yes, that is a six wild icon card. Because we all know the best form of game design is to simply make the numbers bigger. Absolutely. It's all very well copying a deck someone else has made, but unless you have instructions on how to pilot it, you might still be as lost as building one from scratch. Luckily, each pack comes with a unique guide explaining both the rationale behind the deck and the various routes for expansion. To a limited extent, they also address how this deck performs in multiplayer, and for Guardians, which of your multiplayer cards become useless solo and only good for committing to tests. There is even a preemptive FAQ for cards they think you might get stuck on, with Mystics naturally having the most expansive. And there aren't any bonded, myriad or exile cards to increase the complexity level of the deck. You don't need to know any more rules than come in the core box. Oh dear, spoke too soon! Okay, the Survivor deck does include Excel cards, but there are full rules reproduced on the instruction sheet. What is encouraging is that this product seems to have had the most playtesters we have seen in a long time. This is also a deck that has been specifically built to be effective, not only using cards from the entire card pool, but designing cards from scratch to complement this investigator. As a new player, you will probably have a limited card pool, and this is a great way to escape any limitations that come with that. And if you do hate deck building or suffer from analysis paralysis, then when you receive your XP, simply begin swapping out your existing cards for their more expensive versions. Well, not exactly. It's actually pretty close. There are familiar cards, particularly at level 0, as you might expect as well as plenty of brand new class cards you will never have seen before. But what is interesting is that there are variant level versions of existing cards. Some higher level, some brought down to level zero. Remember, this product could have been a reprint of entirely existing cards and investigators, or bulked out with knives and flashlights, so kudos to FFG for not doing that. They also contain five new basic weaknesses for anyone getting a bit bored of amnesia and paranoia. Some products introduce a card which has a variant for each class, like the tarot cards from the Circle Undone. And so we actually have some here. Remember those neutral skills from the core set that you probably used once then forgot all about till Min and Silas came along? Well, they've designed upgraded versions, making them into class skills, because each class does gravitate to a particular investigator skill. Rogues are dexterous, guardians love combat, seekers are all about intellect, and no one makes willpower work harder than mystics. Each of these has an extra icon, and you get to draw an additional card if you succeed by two or more. It's a shame there are only four stats, as survivors must miss out. Oh no wait, there is always Unexpected Courage, which now returns to your hand if you fail, as the original version didn't let you draw any cards. Its versatility was potent enough. And you don't get a third wild icon because apparently someone got greedy and there weren't enough to go around. That's not all folks, another core box stable that got a boost are the skill booster cards, and these do line up with one per class. This will be their third version after those released in the Return to the Core box. Nathaniel here gets a new version of physical training. They can't make them any cheaper or give them any more icons. 
So what they did is make the first two uses each round free, and then you can spend more if you want to. An interesting quirk as the card costs two. Technically they pay for themselves by the start of the next round. The 4 XP cost means you really can't use them out of class, so people like Preston or Calvin or even Jenny who could benefit from a stat boost will be out of luck. Nathaniel does some physical training, Jacqueline studies the arcane, Harvey is hyper aware, uh, ooh hang on a second, oh it must be in here somewhere. Okay, it looks like they gave up on the idea halfway through, possibly as Harvey has access to higher education at level 0 which uses up resources in a similar way. If you want a new hyper awareness or a dig deep or hard knocks you will have to fish them out of the Lair of Dagon Mythos pack which was just released while filming this video. Which you started back in September, lazy g- It's clear you people are going to buy everything anyway so you aren't going to take much convincing. But not only are these products the only way to obtain these new to the LCG investigators they also come with dozens of other cards that you won't find in any other product. And not only can you steal these cards for your existing investigators, but the rule sheets encourage you to deck build with these new investigators using your entire card pool. Although it will be interesting to see if you can make a more effective deck than the one FFG has. So if you don't fancy the investigator in the box, these are now the easiest way to get an injection of 20 plus cards for a single class, rather than 2 or 3 or 4 or 5 at a time. And Daisy will literally lose her shit to finally get her hands on a grotesque statue of her very own. Plus the Seeker deck has one of those nifty unidentified untranslated cards like Strange Solution that you need to upgrade via your campaign log into one of two variants. And it isn't Harvey specific so it could end up on any Seeker's wish list. Wait is that four actions to activate? Told you, all you need to do is make the numbers bigger. That is an interesting question. You mean just buy a standalone and a starter deck? Well, you would need to get hold of a lot of third party tokens for your clue, doom, resources, and etc. Not to mention your chaos tokens. And you could download the rules online. With a standalone, you don't need any encounter cards from the core box to play the scenario, and the starter decks include basic weaknesses. But this seems like a lot of trouble to go to when you could just purchase the core box for a few dollars more which has three adventures and everything you need to get started. Oh lordy, here we go! Many people purchase a second core box even when playing with only one or two players. This is because there are many high power staples that never go out of fashion, such as Machete and Dr. Milan and so on. Well, you won't see any of those cards in here, no matter how tempting it would have been to use this opportunity to rebalance some of the power cards or simply correct misprints. But yes, if you love one of these core box investigators and your main concern is more deck building rather than new adventures, consider these. The class specific packs are now the cheapest way to get maximum player cards fast, particularly at level 0. These are ideal for pairing someone who has a collection and all the tokens and scenarios they need and wants to introduce a new player to the game who owns nothing. Likewise if you have a friend that wants to play along with you but can't commit to buying a collection of their own these are a great facilitator. They are perfect for running demos at a store or convention, global pandemics permitting obviously. If you were playing at an event and someone new wanted to join in then you don't have to lose time or tie up cards and sleeves making them a deck from scratch. Just ask them to pick a deck or roll they like the look of and they can crack it open and join in right away. There is even a short playstyle description on the back of each pack. As well as a QR code allowing you to look through the cards before purchase. Oh, okay, well that was a surprise. Let's try another one. Well, these may be fixed in the future. Not only is this deck playable out of the box, but it has instructions to help and plenty of expansion potential, so one of these packs could easily see you through a whole campaign. You might be precious about people touching your cards, even in sleeves, particularly people you are meeting for the first time at an organised play gathering. Or you may have acquaintances that insist on bending cards, or worse still, picking their teeth with them. Or not washing their hands after they use the bathroom. This is a terrific way of getting people to keep their germs to themselves. Competitive play has long embraced the sealed deck format where you turn up to an event and everybody gets the same product putting them on a level playing field. 
There is no reason why you can't now do that in a cooperative game. This is another thing that works well at events, global pandemics permitting, obviously. If everyone picks a starter, you know you won't be disadvantaged or letting the side down playing with someone that owns everything ever printed. As there are four players and five decks, this means even if picking last, you still get a choice of two. Or you can put them in a bag and randomise them so no one knows what deck they'll be playing until you start. This is yet another way to increase the replayability of the scenarios, freshen up organised play, and to help new players jump on board without having to cash in their college fund. Well, it is certainly an interesting mix. Two of them are existing investigators. In fact, fan favourite Harvey Walters goes right back to the 1980s when Arkham Horror was a roll and move game. Jacqueline Pine isn't quite as old, but is still pretty OG. And three of them are brand new, never seen before investigators, although Stella Clark popped up in the third edition of the board game, round about the same time as her starter deck appeared. They have confirmed that these investigators won't be appearing in regular cycles, so if you need a card with six wild icons in your life, then don't wait. Thanks for watching everyone and staying to the end. Let us know in the comments below if you think we should do individual unboxings of these decks and who we should start with. Why not like and share this video to help more people find it? And if you want to see more videos from us, you can always support our work over on Patreon. The tokens featured were from Luxury Playstyle, Orbits, and by the same token. We probably have videos all about them, along with those standalone packs you saw. In fact, we have hundreds of videos about all things Arkham Horror and beyond. Yes, that is a six wildcard icon.